Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, this video may be for a very small amount of people, but hopefully, you know, I'll, let me explain enough of it so that everybody can come along for the ride. So, you know, every now and then I'm having conversations with people who either work or worked at uh, Marvel and DC and some of these bigger comic companies, or maybe the smaller companies, or maybe the distributors. And the conversation invariably goes down the path of what I like to call, but it's always been that way, closely followed by, well, you just don't understand. And the you just don't understand is usually coupled with, well, you never worked here. You never actually came in and got a paycheck from me. Therefore, you know, you don't understand the, the intricate ways that, uh, that we do things. And so, you know, your complaints, your criticism, your suggestions, your ideas really don't have a lot of merit because you didn't work here. And because you didn't work here, therefore, you don't know the special secret magic that exists to make this company what it is. And this isn't just comics, by the way. My guess is many of you are going to encounter the same thing in your life, wherever you happen to go. Maybe you want to position the group, and the group is is absolutely in need of repair. It, it has problems. It's not achieving what it wants to. And it's sitting there, and it's struggling. And you're like, well, I have some ideas. Here are my ideas. But before you can talk about your ideas, you're told, but you didn't work here. Uh, you didn't work in this group. You you don't know the the people. You don't know why it is we do the things we do. Sure, maybe it's suboptimal. I will, by the way, have you ever in your your life come across a company who will say things like, "Yeah, I know that we were set out to compete with, uh, I don't know, say Apple, but uh, we don't have anywhere close to the footprint of Apple, and you know we don't know what we're doing, and our products aren't selling, and everything else." But it's because people don't understand us. If they just understood us, then you know. Then, then it'll be fine. You know, yeah, we wouldn't be successful, but but you'd understand us. And this is a, a certain mentality that a lot of people have that transitions from success is basically the bottom line and some very, very objective stats, uh, some things that are, are hardened and, and clear, key performance indicators, objective results that are absolutely undisputable. People have moved from that kind of way to assess a company and what's going on to something uh, less, less exciting, uh, which is generally, hey, uh, I need to be understood in my job. I need for you know, everybody to know I'm doing good work. You know, like, like the dog you might have. You're a good boy. It doesn't matter that you crapped all over the, the lawn and the house and peed on things and um, various furniture and, and everything else. It doesn't matter. You're a good boy. You need that validation. You need to be told, hey, I, you know, you're just a dog. I don't know. Anyway, but I digress. Inside comic companies, frequently, bad decisions continue to be bad decisions under the guise of, but it's always been that way. Hey, why are we still sticking with uh, Diamond, a distributor that clearly has major modernization problems, is still behaving and acting like it's the 1980s, and, uh, you know, regularly on a, a basis sends messages that they are absolutely not prepared to take the responsibility that they've been given. And uh, maybe you're going to be in some jeopardy if you continue to back this, this particular horse. But that's the way it's always been, Purge. You don't understand. It's, that's, that's, how, that's how the comic industry works. If we changed, can you imagine how angry people might be? Like who? Your, your customers? I, I have, there's a lot of... Uh, hard truths for the comic industry that sometimes you hear in videos, but mostly not. And it's because they're boring. They're not, uh, they're not the big, exciting things that would get a lot of YouTube clicks and views. They're not going to get everybody outraged and sending in super chats, but they go something like this. The customer doesn't give a rat's ass where the comic is coming from. They don't care about Diamond. They don't care about Lunar or Penguin or anyone else. They care about the magical comic book fairy that's bringing the uh, comics in the box into the store. That's it. They do not care about the uh, weird logistics that have to take place in the email that goes on. And can we get Dan Slott to answer something so the artist can get pages in order to work? They don't care about that. They care about a completed comic book in their hands that's good quality and doesn't feel like they've uh, actually been gouged for the three ninety nine or four ninety nine that's sitting there on that cover price. Most fans don't care about if a, a bunch of variant covers have to be produced in order to flip the comic to be profitable. They just want that comic, and ideally they want it for a while. And 
if you're a variant collector, you want a variant cover that looks kind of cool, one that has something special going on. They're not so keen on uh, completely uh, blank covers that say, uh, you know, we're, we always deliver on Wednesday. Those are, are less interesting to your customer base. But I understand, you know, people go into work every day or don't, maybe they telecommute now, um, or maybe they just don't ever want to go back into the office. And the company is not making them up. That's fine too, I guess. But if you're working in a job, you care about this stuff. You care about this, this kind of tribal knowledge. And in many cases, you cling on to it. You can lay on to it because you feel very, very lucky that you actually got into the company, that you have a job there. And the thing you want to do as soon as you get into the job tends to be build a moat around yourself and defend it. I don't want to lose this job. It took me a long time to get it. And in comics, this is really, really, really apparent in a lot of the people you talk to, including, by the way, the freelancers. You know, given a choice between, hey, I think I'll try and really knock it out of the park with a story that nobody's ever seen before and try and make a name for myself and, hey, I'm going to keep my head down and, you know, just try and get the job done and uh, not, not, you know, create any waves and hopefully they'll keep calling me. It's inherent by the amount of uh, conversations you have with people. They are desperate, and I mean desperate, to get in and stay in. And so as a result, lots of bad decisions will be made. Because, quite frankly, if you try and make good decisions, you might expose yourself and get knocked out. In corporations, there's this thing where consultants will come in and they'll basically give, you know, two day to one week seminars on how to think differently. They will say things like, um, hey, we can't keep doing the same old things. We've got to uh, think about the future. We've got to be modern. And maybe they'll come up with weird little rewards programs and other things that will help encourage and reinforce his message. By the way, in all my consulting and stuff, I never did this shit. I, I just, the problem is that I was too cynical about it. In some cases, it is valuable. Companies will actually change. They'll evolve and they'll, they'll think differently and do differently and be different. And that's important because the reason why people spend millions of dollars, and it usually is millions of dollars for these programs to come into corporations, is because they're aware that this group think status quo, tribal knowledge kind of stuff has seeped its way into the company and people are no longer inventing. And they're watching a lot of smaller companies start to accelerate faster and faster and eventually overtake them. So they try largely in vain to talk to their uh, their people and say things like, hey, you know, we could be better. We could be different. We can be better. I, I moved different and uh, better, combined into one word that was deader, which uh, is what eventually people become. But anyway, they do these things because they're aware that just saying, well, this is always the way it's, it's been, sticking your head in the sand doesn't work. And unfortunately, when I talk to some of these people, whether they're current or former members of the big two, it often feels like they're still clinging on to this. Now, I get it for people who are still in the company. It's brave to do things differently and to think differently and to try and push your people to be different. It's hard. It's much easier to just punch the clock. For people who have left the company, it's weirder. I... If you've, you're gone. You, you've exited the company. You no longer are getting a check there. Why? I, you don't have to immediately turn around and, and bash and be a bitch to everything, but why pretend that all these things that you've been doing are okay? I've done videos, and one in particular um, topic that I've, I've mentioned many times is, hey, people often don't get paid their royalties, royalties that they're contractually obligated to get paid for. They have to go hunt them down. In many cases, if you are a comic creator and you're not on top of what you're owed and, and desperately clawing to get those numbers and keeping track of them, you're probably taking money out of your own pocket because the company will just forget. And I had a couple of people reach out to me saying that is absolutely not true. People are paid absolutely you know, on time, no problem. We've never had that problem. That is not true. And I proceeded to send the receipt, send. Like, well, here's five people you might want to talk to then. Here's five people who, who are owed money who have been trying to get in touch with you for six months or longer, in one case, three years, and nobody will respond. Conveniently, you're no longer giving them work. You might want to check because you're, you're in violation of your contract. And until I actually hook them up with lawyers and then magically, oh, hey, we found, ah, man, it slipped. We were getting to it. It was just, uh, you know, it was stuck behind a filing cabinet here, this thing. I, I don't know. Until it, it hit the breaking point where legal action was was threatened, 
you know, it was going to continue to be that way. And make no no mistake, when you threaten legal action, you're you're done at that company. The person's not getting hired there again. That's like the that's the last resort. That's scraping the last dime out of the company. And sometimes so the you know publishers will even tell you this, even though it's you know at that point you're you're absolutely playing with fire in terms of getting sued again. Imagine signing a contract saying, "Hey, you deserve this money," not paying it, and then when somebody complains, giving them money, but in the process going. Uh, yeah, but we're never going to hire you again. Uh, you're any any competent run company will tell you that's the worst thing in the world. But regardless of the ethics of this, which are poor, there's another you know piece in all of it, which is companies do need to change practices. And it's not necessarily admission that hey we're screwing everything up, we're bad people or anything else. It's an admission that time happens, that modernization happens. There's a reason why there are still a handful of companies and a handful of industries using fax machines. It's because they haven't had that that talk with themselves. They haven't had that come to Jesus with themselves to say, hey, it's probably time we considered changing some of our long-established practices. There's this, uh, you know, this, this expression, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's fine, but if then you pretend never to notice when it's broke, that, 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 you know, colloquial saying no longer applies. It doesn't fit anymore. And yet, that's a lot of what the comic industry seems to be doing, looking itself in the mirror and saying, I'm good, I'm great, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But there are clearly things that are broken. Some cases I get upset at the, uh, not, you know, not, not you know, like really upset, but when I listen to a lot of the YouTube videos that are off talking about like B.D. Ayala for the 8,000th time, somebody who's not working in comics, who doesn't even have any line of sight to working in comics, um, I think to myself, yeah, you know, we, we got the point. And yeah, sure, they could always hire this person again in the future. Or yeah, sure, the thinking that hired this person who didn't put numbers up on the board might be applied to someone else. All true, I guess. But is that the real problem? The real problems, again, like I said earlier, they're not sexy, they're not, they don't make good YouTube. They certainly don't fit well into the culture war. But they are problems nonetheless. And the reason I get frustrated at some of these topics getting brought up again and again and again, it becomes a very convenient way for the comic industry to point at the critics and say, see, they're all racist, homophobe creeps. Look, they're talking about this. And in some cases, it's cherry picking. You know, a couple years ago, several people were doing commentary on how expensive comics were. Quite a few. They still are, but not as many. But three or four years ago, a lot of people were talking about this. And what was the comic industry obsessed with? Hey, all of our critics are racist and bigots. Because there was a few of those videos out too. I'm not saying videos where people are racist or bigots. I don't know or will pretend or you know, feel like it's my job to just search into somebody's heart and start calling them names. But the reality was, the real problem, comics are pricing their way out of the market, was ignored in favor of a problem that may be a problem or I, who knows people that are being hired suck comics have hired sucky people for a long time doesn't make it good but comics pricing themselves into uh you know their own oblivion absolutely is a bad thing but it became a very convenient excuse it became one more way the comic industry decided to say hey nothing to see here no problem we're fine you just don't understand Companies that take this position, the you don't understand, you've never worked here, we know best, invariably die. And this isn't anything new, and it's not even anything particularly tragic because it's happened so often and so frequently to a lot of companies throughout history. The shame of it is, and this is the other part that, if I can be so bold, to a lot of people who work in comics in return, you don't understand yeah, you know, maybe some of the magic of Spider-Man or Batman or Superman or the X-Men, maybe it, you know, it loses some of its magic when you work on those comics and you actually have to work through an editor and write pages and turn stuff around. I understand. You know, there's a lot of things that say, hey, if you're an artist and, or a painter or something, you have to paint commercially every single day. It's no longer as cool as it was when you were doing it as a hobby. I get it. But for the readers, for the customers, for the people who are often forgotten in this whole process, these are memories for them. They're still, you know, pretty important things to their life. They still care. They still have an emotional attachment 
to these comics. And so the shame of it is, yeah, a lot of businesses fold. A lot of businesses do not evolve, do not get better. And, um, you know, when it's a uh, paper making company, then, you know, it's sad and, you know, there's people with memories for it, sure. But here you're talking about a product that was designed to create memories, to design to create emotional attachment. And that going away does hurt. And that's why you see so many people bitching about it, because they really don't want to see these things that they love vanish. Anyway, food for thought. Never change, folks. Thanks for listening. 